Hear that sound? It's the heater because it's that time of the year again. Hey everybody, welcome back to Art La Carte and I'm gonna be opening up another Smart Art Box. I've done a lot of Smart Art Boxes, so let's see what this one is today. And we are looking like my friend Watercolor. Aqua inks and colors, so we got aqua inks. But inside the box we have a very fancy palette. In fact, I like this one because it has the wells and then it has the little mixing areas. Next we have a Marabu Graphics Watercolor Paint Set. I've gotten a lot of these in like bottles, but I, ooh, these are huge too. Look how big these are. I've never gotten them in tubes before, so I'm excited to try these out. A nice variety of colors. We have three Echoline brush pens, so I'm assuming these are like water soluble. Like a Crayola marker, only in watercolor. Oh, see now these are what I'm used to when I get water inks. Come out of there. So we have, <gasps> you guys, these are metallic -y. Oh, these are gonna be gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, it's some of my favorite colors. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. Then we have three water pens. I remember when these first came out, oh, I could not wait to get some. And I have quite the extensive collection of water pens now. Yes. And a ginormous watercolor sketchbook. This is, wow, wow, this paper is really thick. This is a 140 pound, 300 GSMs, and you have three sheets. And Fabriano is a pretty good brand, so I'm excited to try this out. Oh, look, my little ton of baby unicorn fell down. We have quite the selection of supplies and again I love watercolors so this will be fun to play with and I'm excited to try out some new products. So that's the great thing about Smart Art is they may give you a medium that you're used to um, but you might get a new supply that you've never gotten to test out and you might find a new art best friend in the medium world. So I actually have, I've never tried these, I've never tried these and while I have had these brands before I've never had these exact ones so and I never tried this uh, tablet. So one, two, three, four things out of all of these I've never had before. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna swatch out these colors. So I'm just gonna swatch them out right in this thing. Let's start with this side here. And they're not, so usually these things have like a little thing you poke with them, but this one has a little, a little uh, pull tab, which, uh, Pulls very nicely. Okay, I have all the colors swatched out. Let me grab an actual uh, paintbrush. All right, let me kind of put a little line here and just see how they spread. So what I want to do here is just to test out all of the pigments, see how well they travel, um, see how they look when they're kind of spread out a little bit, and then I want them to dry, and I want to see if I can lift them. If they behave like regular watercolors, I can reactivate them. If they behave like an ink, then they should dry permanent. So we'll see what these, what these babies can do. And, you know, you can't really see too much with the white, but... And now I'm gonna let them dry. Okay, so these parts are pretty dry. Uh, these are almost dry, but it would take quite a while. So now the test comes, do these act like watercolors or do they act like inks? Um, can I Re revitalize them. So as I'm moving here, these do look like they're acting more like watercolor than a permanent ink. So that's good to know that if you put something down and you want to change it, that uh, you can come back through and pick these up and move them. Okay, I forgot. I probably should swatch these out and these out as well, just so we know what all the products do before we jump into creating a piece, so. 
So again, those just kind of go in like a marker. Ooh, I like that. That's a vibrant. So they have a pretty good staining power, but are movable. Very interesting. Pretty mixed up. This is the artist workout. It's arm day. Okay. Pretty close. Okay. So let's crack this baby open. Ooh. Ooh, look at the shines on that. Yeah, so they have a definite shimmer to them. This one's kind of a, like a silvery. This one's def more blue than silver. This one, like, you don't mis mistake it for silver. And this one's just a, a rose. I think this one's interesting because, um, and it might be just because I didn't mix it up enough, but there's sections of it that are not as metallic. Where this one's pretty solid, and that one's pretty solid. So, I don't know, just might need to mix it more. One would think I would do a really super colorful little tropical fish kind of piece, but I'm feeling an owl. I'm, I'm inspired because because in their book they give you some prompts, and usually I don't follow their prompts. They have apple, maple, um, owl, and acorn, and it's the owl that has inspired me. I've done several owl paintings and I kind of want to paint another owl. Um, because I'm going to do this in a sketchbook, these are kind of more, more studies than a finished piece. So I'm just going to play with my colors on this and then who knows, it might turn into to something more substantial. Sometimes you get the, the diamond in the rough. Like I feel with these colors I should do another galaxy owl. Let's just try this one from this guy first here. So I'm not getting super detailed into this piece because again, this is me just testing out these products and seeing what they can do. If it comes out something cool, awesome, but I'm not gonna be disappointed if I don't come up with something great. Um, I like this idea, but I can already tell that the setup is not working for me. So this is kind of the, a progression piece. It's one of those pieces that you do to prepare yourself for the, the actual piece. You learn your mistakes on this one.
piece has gone through a lot of changes from inspiration to this piece here, which I'm not even going to call this one the final piece. So again, I think this is on the process to being a final piece. And it took an odd turn. As you can see, my owl has whiskers. So during the creation process, I was adding a little feather highlights and then I decided to add some feather shading and then it just went crazy. And I was like, it looks more like fur than feathers now. And th that's when I decided this piece kind of um, was going to be an odd piece. Sometimes you just gotta take that jump, that leap, and try something out different. So there is a an old poem, The Owl and the Pussycat, and I thought, what if an owl and a cat were combined together into one creature? It's like an owl, but it kind of looks like a cat. It's, it's a... So that's what this became. Anyway, you never know what you're going to get when you just start playing with art. You can get something fun, something that's totally messed up, a really fun idea for a future project, or you could get a finished piece. And I'd love to see where you are on your artistic journey, so make sure to tag me in your social media posts of things that you're working on. I'd love to see them. I'll leave uh, the links to my social media in the description box below. If you want to keep following along on my artistic journey, feel free to subscribe to this channel or follow me on social media. I post a lot of pictures on my Instagram of things that I'm working on. And if you'd like more information about Smart Art Box, maybe getting some ideas about new art supplies to use, a little inspiration to get you out of an art schlump, I will leave a link to their website in the description box below as well, so go and check them out. So until the next art video, God bless you guys, keep being awesome, and now go make some art.